Beth, what we're seeing here in San Diego and all across the country, for that matter, there is no denying the racial tensions between law enforcement and some communities. Our Team 10 investigator, Melissa Messia, takes a look at the issues of race and bias and what's being done about it. From La Mesa to downtown San Diego and across the country, Black Lives Matter! calls for justice. This follows the death of George Floyd and after video surfaced of this man's recent hey, confrontation with a La Mesa police officer. As part of Team 10's effort to dive into the issues surrounding policing, I spoke to the leaders of the three largest departments in the county. While these interviews were conducted late last year and before George Floyd's death, the issue still remains top of mind. Learning about diversity and bias starts in the academy with continual education throughout the years. What I try to focus on is who we're recruiting. We're constantly evaluating our training. It's really all about people and relationships. I requested the racial background of sworn personnel in our local departments. Al Cajon and Escondido did not participate. In the Sheriff's Department, 54% of personnel are white, 6% are black, 31% Hispanic. Sheriff Gore said it's close to representing the population in their jurisdiction, but not quite there. We're not exactly where I'd like to be right now, but that's a, it's a time-consuming process. That diversity, are you where you want to be? I'm not, you know, and, and that's one of the things that we've really been focusing on. Chief Nislight said diversity and community policing are his top priorities. How do you ease that tension? By uh, being involved, by coming to the table and having conversations. If we're working against each other, it's going to be much more difficult. All three put out a statement following Floyd's death, condemning what happened. Chief Kennedy wrote his death could have been prevented. But as we've seen, there's still a long way to go to bridge the racial divide. Melissa Masiha, Team 10. In this video, you will see what to expect during the Garland Police Department Civil Service Exam. The exam will consist of a multiple choice and physical fitness test. Each individual event is pass or fail. If you do not meet the minimum standards on any event, you will be dismissed from the applications process. Please wear comfortable clothes and shoes to the exam since a portion will require physical fitness. For the multiple choice exam, you must arrive at the testing location before 8 a.m. that morning. Doors will lock at 8 a.m. and no other applicants will be allowed to enter. No exceptions. If you are coming from out of town, it is recommended to make overnight arrangements to ensure you arrive at the testing site with plenty of time. When you report to the testing site, bring only your ID. Cell phones, laptops, backpacks, and purses will not be allowed into the exam. The exam will cover topics such as grammar, vocabulary, and reading comprehension. You are given two hours to complete the exam and must score at least 70% to proceed to the next step. Immediately following the written exam, those who score higher than 70% will move to the physical fitness test, which will consist of three parts. First, the applicant must complete a minimum of 19 push-ups. The applicant doing the exercise will have a spotter which will lay down to make a fist on the ground under the person performing push-ups. You must start in the up position, bringing your chest all the way down to touch the spotter's fist and come back up on each push-up. If you must rest, do so in the up position. If you stay too long in the down position, your exercise will be terminated and you will be disqualified from testing any further. After the push-ups, the applicant must complete at least 29 sit-ups in 90 seconds. For this exercise, the applicant will lay on their back with their fingers interlocked behind their head. You will have a spotter which will hold your feet in position on the ground. If you must rest, do so in the up position. If you stay too long in the down position, your exercise will be terminated and you will be disqualified from testing any further. 
Finally, the applicant must complete a one mile run in 11 minutes or less. You must complete four laps around the track and with each lap you will receive your time and number of laps to go. After an applicant successfully completes the written and physical fitness exam, the background investigation process will begin.